Hello, wonderful students. This is the Teaching Service Commission Radio Teaching Program in collaboration with the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education. My name is Elsie Mae Melanie Buckle, and I am your radio teacher for Maths Lower Primary Grades 1 to 3. Maths lessons will be broadcast every Tuesday and Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Even though I can't see you, I know that you will listen carefully and do your best. I am so excited. You worked very hard in our last lesson. Health message. In our Monday lesson, we talked a lot about washing hands. Washing our hands is an important way to protect ourselves not only during this time but always. Today we are going to learn about the tiny living things that can live on our hands. These tiny things are called germs. G E R M S. Can you say that with me? Germs. Germs are so small that you cannot even see them with your own eyeball. You would need an instrument called a microscope to see them. Because germs are so small and you cannot see them, they get inside of our bodies and make us sick. How do germs get on our hands? Great question. Germs can live everywhere. In the air, on your food, in the dirt, and on our bodies. Most germs cannot hurt us, but there are some bad germs in the world that can make us very sick. When we don't wash our hands, we let those germs live on us. How can these germs get in our bodies? These germs can get in our bodies when we don't wash our hands. Let's look at one example. Say you shake your neighbor's hand and then go eat your mother's food. If you don't wash your hands first, whatever was on your neighbor's hand will now go down into your stomach with that food. This is why it is important to wash your hands with soap and water. If you only use water, the germs can stay on your hands. When you use soap, you make your hands slippery and the germs will fall off your hands. Are you getting it? Yes. Washing my hands with soap and water can make the germs fall off my hands. If germs get in my body, they can make me sick. That is why it is important to wash my hands with soap and water for 20 seconds, plenty of times in a day. Exactly. Thank you so much for listening about germs and hand washing today. Remember, washing your hands can help make sure you and your family stay healthy. Don't forget to teach your adults and brothers and sisters about germs today. You can help keep your entire family feeling healthy and strong. R I G H T Right. These are the things that every person should have. Food, water, a place to live, education, and health care. When you have these things, you will live a good life. Today, we are going to talk about another one of your rights. The right to be protected from harmful work. 
this one is a very important one because sometimes we can see children doing work that only adults should be doing. Why do you think this isn't good? Hmm, because adults are big and children are small? Exactly. That is one reason this is not good. Some work should only be done by adults because it is dangerous. For example, if you are a child working in a gold mine, that is against the law. That work is too dangerous for children to do. A child is anyone who is from 0 to 18 years of age. However, if you are a child and you help your mom in the garden sometimes, that is not against the law. It is because it isn't dangerous to you. But if your mother forces you to miss school to help with the garden, then that is against the law. You should never miss school to do work. Aside from working in the gold mines, what kind of work is too dangerous for children? Great question. There are so many jobs that children should not be doing. Children should not be selling in the streets, they should not be serving in the army, and they should not be sold for any kind of labor, including prostitution. All these kinds of work are harmful to children and are against the law. If children do these things, they can be harmed in many ways including missing out on their education. We as adults have a duty to protect children. It is our right to be protected from harmful labor. Exactly. It is your right to be protected from harmful labor. And it is the duty of adults to protect you. Thank you for listening today. Now, before we begin, let's take some time to settle our brains and get down to work. We'll start with five deep breaths. During these five breaths, try to notice your breathing and notice any feelings around your body. Big deep breath in. And out. In and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Nicely done. I hope you feel a bit more settled and ready to practice working with numbers. Today, we are going to continue the work we started in our last lesson, where we practiced breaking apart numbers into tens and ones. For today's lesson, I hope you have your notebook and pencils and your 10 counters and sticks. If you don't have counters and sticks, you can draw sticks and dots on your paper to represent tens and ones. It's number warm-up time. Today we are going to practice counting beyond 100 while we warm up our bodies. If you are sitting down, Please stand up so we can get warmed up. So the first movement we're going to do is arm circles. Start by holding your arms straight out to your sides. Your body should look like the letter T. 
Now we are going to make little circles with our arms, counting in ones with each circle. Make sure to keep your arms straight. So let's start from 100 and go to 110. Ready? Go. 100, 101. 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110. Excellent work. Now we're going to do neck circles. We're going to roll our necks in a circle, counting with each go round, trying to get a nice stretch in your neck. We're going to start from 111 and go to 120. Ready? Go. 111. 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120. Nice job. Now stand with your feet apart like an upside down Y. So spread your feet apart. We're going to count from 121 to 130. Each time we count, we're going to take our hand and touch our toe on the other side of our body. Then stand up again. Let's start with our right hand touching our left toe, then back up. Then we'll touch our left hand to our right toe before standing up again. Get ready. Go. 121. 122. 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130. Well done! For 131 to 140, we'll do some hopping. Get ready. Go. 131, 132, 133, 134, 135. 136, 137, 138, 139, 140. We're almost done. Now, from 141 to 150, we'll jog. Do not run. And be careful not to hurt yourself as we count. Ready? Let's jog. 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150. Whew, what a workout. Now, great job.
job warming up your body and brain. We're going to start our main activity. Did you know there are lots of ways to write numbers? Oh, really? Like what? Well, let's think about the number 28, for example. Write the number 28 down in your notebook. To do this, write a 2, then an 8, directly to the right of it. When you write it this way, the 2 is in the tens place and the 8 is in the ones place. The 2 is in the tens place, which means that the number is made up of two tens. The eight is in the ones place, which means that the number is made up of eight ones. This is an easy way to write big and small numbers. This is called standard form. Repeat after me. Standard, standard form. form. Yes, standard form. You've been writing numbers in standard form all your life without even knowing it. Yes, I guess I have. If you are listening, write the number 28 on your paper in standard form. Now let's talk about another way to write the same number. In addition to writing numbers in standard form, we can also write them in expanded form. Expanded form. If something is expanded, it is made larger or spread out. Students repeat after me, expanded form. Expanded form. So, are we going to spread out the number 28? Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. To write a number in expanded form, we show the value of each digit. What do you mean? Let's take the number 28 again. Can you represent that number with sticks and counters? Sure. I know I can make 28 with two sets of 10 sticks and 8 ones counters. Students, represent 28 with two sets of 10 sticks and 8 ones counters. If you don't have sticks and counters, you can draw two sets of ten sticks and eight ones dots on your paper. Great. Now, look at the number 28 that you wrote and at the sticks and dots that you laid out. What's the value of Two. Hmm, let me think. I can see that I have two ten sticks and I see there is a two in the tens place of the number 28. Two tens is equal to 20 because 10 plus 10 is 20. Exactly right. A two in the tens place has a value of 20. What's the value of the 8 in 28? I know this one. I know this one. I have 8 ones counters and I see that the 8 is in 28. It's in the ones place. 8 ones has a value of 8. Wow! Good explanation. Thanks. So, 
to write 28 in expanded form, we write 20 and 8. Almost. To write 28 in expanded form, we write 20 plus 8. So, 28 equals 20 plus 8. Oh, I see what you are saying. If you are listening, write 28 is equal to 20 plus 8 on your paper. Do you see how we expanded or stretched out the 28 to show the value of the 2 and the 8? Good! You are catching on quickly. Do you want to try another one? Let's do it. Okay. Can you write 75 in expanded form? Sure. Students listening, can you help me out? Use your 10 sticks and 1's counters to represent the number 75. Now think, what is the value of all of the tens? What is the value of all the ones? I see that you laid out seven tens sticks and five ones counters. I sure did. So, how does that help you write 75 in expanded form. The seven ten sticks tell me that the value of the seven is 70. Mm -hmm. Since seven tens is equal to 70, okay. the five ones counters tell me that the value of the five is five. Since five ones is equal to five, that makes so much sense. What a clever explanation. So, you all have done a good job so far. But I'm wondering if you can tell what a number is just from its expanded form. Hmm, I've never done that before, but I'm ready for the challenge. Even if I get some wrong, I can learn from my mistakes. Great attitude. Let's try the first one. What? is a standard form again. A standard form is the way we usually write numbers with digits in certain places. So the first one, 60 plus 9. What is 60 plus 9 in standard form? You can use your sticks and counters or you can draw a picture to help yourself. What is 60 plus 9 in standard form? Okay, I've got it. The answer is 69. How did you get that? I know that 60 is equal to 6 tenths, so I can put a 6 in the tenths place. The 9 is equal to 9 ones, so I can put a 9 in the ones place. A 6 in the tens place and a 9 in the ones place makes 69. Nice job. Okay, next one. 5 plus 40. What is 5 plus 40 in standard form? You can use your sticks and counters or you can draw a picture to help yourselves. So write 5 plus 
40 in standard form in your notebooks now. Okay, the number in standard form is 45. Hmm, I got 54. Oh, wow. Well, it seems that we've got some disagreements. That's great because that means we can discuss this and learn something new about math together. Students listening at home, who do you think is correct? Is 5 plus 40 equal to 45 or 54? Share your answer with someone at home and be sure to explain your answer. Okay. Precious, can you explain how you got 54? I got 54 because I saw the 5, so I wrote down a 5 first. Then I saw the 40, so I wrote a 4 next to the 5. The number I got was 54. Thank you for sharing. Can you explain how you got 45? I know that the 5 represents 5 ones, so I took out 5 ones counters. Next, I know that 40 represents 4 tens, so I took out 4 tens stick, sticks. I put a 4 in the, four, four in the tens place and a 5 to the right of the four and the ones place the number i got was 45. oh i see what mistake i made i put the five in the tenth place when it should have been in the ones place the answer should be 45. thank you chukuma for helping me realize my mistake you're welcome remember students if you're making mistakes, that means you're trying. Mistakes are how we learn and grow. Okay, do you know what time it is? No, what time is it? It's mystery number time. You're right. Okay, let's get started. Listen carefully. My friend John has lots of favorite numbers. Listen to the clues to find out what they are. Each number has two digits each number has seven as a digit john only likes odd numbers listen to the clue again each number has two digits each number has seven as a digit john only likes odd numbers so now make a list of all of john's favorite numbers in your notebook remember john only likes odd numbers for first clue i know that i am working with two digits numbers this means the numbers have two digits in the tens place and the ones place. I also know that the number has seven as a digit. If I list all the two digit numbers, I know with a seven in the ones place. I get 17, 27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77, 87 and 97. They are all odd numbers because they have a 7 in the 1's place so I can 
keep them. I did the same thing. Next, I listed all the two digit numbers with a 7 in the 10th place. 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. I know that 70, 72, 74, 76 and 78 can't work because they are even. That leaves me with 17, 27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77, 87, 97, 71, 73, 75 and 79. Wow, great job solving this number mystery. Pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Great job. Well, we are close to the end of our time together today. What did we work on? We worked on how to represent numbers in expanded form. And what is expanded form? Expanded form shows us the value of each digit. For example, the number 72 in expanded form is 70 plus 2. Well, that's it for our lesson today. Great work growing your brain. For homework, one challenge question. Are there more even two digit numbers or more odd two digit numbers? And for a bonus challenge, make up some mystery number riddles to ask your family and friends. At the end, I'd want you to call in and give us the answers to last week's homework. Goodbye for now.